I'm in I'm in day off like mode right now, so I'm All no right. makeup. I'm good though. You look fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Hey, everybody, it's Dan. It's that time once more to go around the world one more time and have a beer or two along the way. Thanks a lot for coming out this week. And thanks for tuning in for last week for when we were talking with Martin Keene from the Homebrew Challenge. Um, if you haven't checked him out, please go to YouTube. Check him out. Lots of cool stuff there, especially the, the challenge he did, which was uh, 99 beers in 99 weeks. So, And he's come out with some really cool stuff. Uh, he's talked about, I remember one beer he talked about was the chocolate cherry porter on nitro he did for his wife that he said actually turned out pretty good. So if you haven't checked him out, please do. If you want to hit him up for recipes, please do, because he's a very cool guy and I can't speak any more highly of him. If you have not guessed who we have on the show this week, uh, we have Tyler and, or do you prefer Ty or Tyler? Oh, Tiger? yeah. <laughs> no, Tyler. Tyler. Tyler? Yeah, All right. We have yeah. Tyler and Lori from Brewed Up Podcast. Um, if you haven't checked these guys out, go on to Spotify, listen to them. The first time I heard of these guys was when they were on the, the Homebrew Happy Hour. And you guys were talking Aww. with Josh. Yes. Bless yes. Him. He's an Love easy Josh. mark to pick on. No, he's, he's honestly, I hate <laughs> Lori's he's laughing. On. <laughs> he's, cool. he's, he's awesome fun. he's super fun <laughs> he's a fun guy he no get me wrong ted uh and um todd and uh josh and uh james are fantastic guys to talk to uh, i always reach out to them when i have questions about stuff they're fantastic so cool. this week we got these fantastic ladies on the show and while i gonna while we get some things sorted out stay tuned stay listen to the sponsors and we'll be right back and we're back. So we have these fantastic ladies on the other side of North America right now, where I'm stuck in my office here in Ottawa, Ontario. They're out in California. Uh, if I'm right, you guys are part of SoCal, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Or the or the Cervezos. <laughs> so those are <laughs> yeah, two different. I mean, two, yeah, two, the same but different things. Yeah, Lori. Lori can explain it. Well, we're <laughs> We're located um, in, La we're both in LA, the LA area, Los Angeles County. Um, she's in the most northerly part and I'm in kind of the most southerly part. And we're, that's considered Southern California or SoCal. And then we're also, our homebrew club is called SoCal Cerveceros. Okay. That's where I was getting confused. Trust me, it. Doesn't, take, it. doesn't take much to confuse this guy. I've been dropped in my head one too many times. It's all good. Trust me. It's all good. <laughs> so he's been um, golfing. What's that? I said you've been golfing. I've been go <laughs> golfing. Uh, okay. Golfing doesn't really equate to being dropped in your head. I, I used to be a paratrooper jumping out of airplanes. I've landed on landed great. I've landed bad. Oh. I've racked my head off the ground a few times. Explains a lot about the way I act. So have no fears. All is good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your service, by the way. <laughs> yes, 100%. 100%. Thank you. But like I tell everybody else, it is a job like anybody else's. The only difference is I signed online with my with my life being the paycheck. Only difference. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Only difference. That's cool. Okay. So let's talk beer, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh. What are you cracking, Lori? I'm cracking a beer. It's um, it's actually technically a graph. It's half beer, half cider, but they don't call it a graph. They just Ooh. call it ale with cider must. But it also has Buddha hand, which is um, kind of a weird citrus fruit. Not weird, but a unique citrus fruit. And Y-E-T hops. So Ooh. it's kind of lemony, hoppy. And um, it's from a place called Celador. And Tyler and I went on a date last week and I bought this. Nice. My baby. Nice. <laughs> Some things I've been getting into. for my birthday. Let's be specific. It was, it was, oh, yeah, it birthday? was, her, it was her birthday. I had to take her out it and get was. Her drunk. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> You're what, what, 24, 25? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. 24, 25. Exactly. That's, 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 that's right. I play it safe. Cause I never <laughs> asked. <laughs> yeah. Some of the things I've been getting into here are like, um, it's cider mixed with lemonade, which has been really, really good. Ooh, tasty. Okay. Very tasty. So how did you guys meet? Hmm. We met. <laughs> so we met for the, through the aforementioned. We met on Tinder. Just yes, kidding. <laughs> only fans. No. Um, we met through the aforementioned SoCal Cerveceros, which is a uh, homebrew club down here in Southern California. So SoCal, for all these little that don't understand stupid LA California <laughs> language. <laughs> SoCal is short for Southern California. And um, it, it, it's like, it's a pretty big range of like counties, um, which kind of makes things a little difficult, but also, you know, very familiar. So we, uh, she had joined the club before me and my first meeting, she was there and yeah that's how we met and from there we kind of it was just like boom click easy you're the homie yeah that was nice much, yeah and you guys have some pretty <laughs> cool beer ventures so far with some of the stuff you've been doing oh yeah, yeah. we just like <laughs> talk beer and then just try weird shit and tyler oh can i say the can i say the word anyway Tyler works at a homebrew shop. He said shit. <gasps> Trust me, army guy. There's a lot more coming out of my mouth. Trust me. <laughs> Actually, I was um, checking out your podcast and I did note it said explicit. So I was like, perfect. We won't oh, yeah. get in trouble. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Be yourselves. If, if like I drop F-bombs every now and then, don't worry about it. Okay. Perfect. So but, no, I mean, Lori is to continue it. <laughs> to continue what Lori was saying. Um, oh, we just, we do all kinds of weird stuff. It's mostly, I mean, it, it's in the name of learning. And then yeah. we, you know, we have a podcast. So it's like, oh yeah, we have to do that for the podcast. So it's really fun to kind of feel like we're on a mission to try something new or test something out and then, you know, report back and discuss it. So what have been some of the most interesting, like, I guess, adventures or experiments that you've done brewing. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've got quite a few brews under your belt. I do know you guys do have some hardware under your belts from beer competitions. So you're you're not just home brewers, you're competition winners or, or placers. So let's 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 feed the machine a little here. Let's hear let's hear some accolades. You know what? It's so funny because there is a beer that kind of combines those two things, like one of our first experiments and a piece of hardware that we achieved from that experiment. So we were kind of like, oh, let's try, you know, a kettle sour. This is, I mean, this is like a couple of years ago. Um, neither of us had ever tried it. I'd only kind of read, read about it and asked, you know, fellow homebrewers about it you know, what's the process, getting mm-hmm. all the steps down as much as possible. So we're like, you know, let's try it. You know, let's try kettle sour, a gosa, um, you know, like German sour wheat beer. And, you know, let's throw like mango into it, like whatever, fuck it. And <laughs> so we, the first round on that brew was, I mean, okay. So kettle sour isn't like super experimental, but if you've never done it, it is it's, a it's process a beast. and it's actually a process if you have done it that's why i haven't done it it's, like it's in a, a while <laughs> yeah and it like when you have certain equipment it makes it a little bit easier yeah. too so that's it's one of those things so like we you know the first round um we missed a step and like you know long story short my bedroom started smelling like puke after like 24 hours <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but we you know happened to anyone it happens Mm -hmm. to anyone we you know kind of like rearranged that one but tried it again a nice clean one and then we entered it actually Lori was like we need to enter this into a competition and we won gold for the category so that was cool it was like a mango uh gosa um but yeah I mean I don't know we've tried a bunch of different stuff i can't even like off the top of my head 
Lori does so much cool shit. I mean, chill throw. <laughs> this girl. Right yeah, here. you do. <laughs> I do too. I walked into her apartment last week <laughs> and she was steaming plantains and toasting coconut. And I was like, Ooh, what Toast, are you making? Steaming me? plantains and toasting coconut. Yes. I thought I was going to get a pie or a cake or a treat or something but yeah. no, she just dumped it in a beer i would have thought a tostones or something <laughs> yeah i just dumped it in a porter it's it's kind of like a, a you know a test batch of something and i will report back that you know the the sample before packaging last night came out pretty damn good so nice. Did, nice. You, did you package an extra little bottle on the side I did two bombers with like bottle conditions and my baby keg, the three gallon keg. So nice. All right. So when you did your kettle sour, (laughs) did you do it with lactose bacillus or did you actually use like tried and true, good, straight old Greek yogurt into the kettle? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if you guys have um, good belly up in Canada, but good belly is like a probiotic drink and it is mm-hmm. primarily lactobacillus plantarum and it's perfect because you get like mango flavor and so I you, don't know, you, you like lost mango because i'm allergic to it so <laughs> oh my god you're allergic to mango um, see i never was before and then one night and like my wife and i just moved to our new house maybe two months ago so at our mm-hmm. old house i i actually peeled a mango completely Cut all the flesh out of it, started eating it, and I felt fine. Then my wife, like by me, an hour later, my life wife was looking at me, says, "Why are you so bright red?" I said, "I don't know, but I'm." <laughs> why do you look like that? <laughs> why you look like, like your eyes are like blood red, and I'm like, oh. I don't know, but my skin is so itchy. I want to rip it off my body. Oh my goodness! And the next morning, I looked like Freddy Krueger guy had gotten a hold of me. I'm so I'm sorry. So, I don't like that. I do not like that. That's like nope. deathly allergic. That's yeah. why I stay away from mango now. Even though it's probably a one-off mango? thing, just stay away from it. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm talking about. That, that was the first time we ever had a mango like nope. a year ago or what was that? Oh, I have, that, that was five years ago. Mm. And mm. since then, I just don't take the chance. It's not worth it. But uh, I do get experimental with things like blueberries and cherries, peaches, apricots, and things like that all going into beer. I I, yeah. I I work in a craft brewery where we believe that if you say it's like a blueberry saison or a strawberry or rhubarb, whatever, whatever you say, it's it's supposed to be there, it best damn freaking be there. Because if it's not, mm. you're lying. Fruit accountability. You know what? So right before we hopped on here, I did like, and I told Lori this, I did a split batch of like same base. It was like Pilsner, Munich, uh, and then hops were, I don't remember. It was like just some something random. Something is like, it was kind of like a Frankenstein, like whatever's in my house, like throw it together, make a batch. But I split, I split like seven gallons and I threw lager yeast into one and like you know traditionally like like 52 degrees fermented it and the other one i threw like a a saison blaugy yeast and dirty dozen which is like from i don't know if you've heard of it but it's it's basically Mm -hmm. like 12 breath strains and like i think east coast yeast makes it it. and after the the brett one fermented i threw like a tropical blend of like frozen fruit in there just i was like whatever this is gonna be however it tastes just had some and it was banging like pineapple bread ripe fruit mango whatever it was pretty good so all right so i'm gonna play the two of you against each other in your own individual brewing who has had the best results in the craziest thing you've ever done Probably Lori. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't. I, First of all, I, no, I feel like Lori does and never fails. Like almost. Oh, that's completely incorrect. When I no. fail, I pour it out. <laughs> I, I hear you. Beer. 
I, I hear you. I've done that. I've done that on four or five batches. I've dumped beer. Trust Ooh, me. Tyler, it, what are you, what are you drinking? Sparkling water. Tyler. <laughs> I know I drink kind of a lot before I hopped on here and then I ate food and I didn't want to like drink while I was on here and like pass out. So and that was already four beers in. So <laughs> Yeah, Wait, exactly. So you, you guys are both like on your way out and I'm just now trying to enter. No, I'm trying happening? to keep the stamina up. Oh, so I, I, okay. I would have kept going, but I still have to go to sleep and, and whatnot. No, we, we're partying, Dan. You asked us here. <laughs> it's like 2 a.m. Right. where he is. Uh, I'll tell kidding. you what, next time we do, a, we do like a little talk like this, I'll make sure I have at least two cans of beer or at least two glasses of beer on the desk with me when we're talking. Wait, well, do thanks. they have like, do they have like Coors Light in Canada? Like what's the international pale oh, in Canada? Why, why would you want to drink Coors Light? Hey, you I'm just kidding. <laughs> you just, hey, if you're going to drink hey. Coors Light, open a tap. There's water. It's, come on. Huh? What, what are people drinking in Ottawa? Uh, so where I live here in Ottawa, we have 52 craft breweries. Wow. <laughs> and I work at, the, at the, the, we were just voted uh, Ottawa's best local craft brewery where cool. I work, which is called Stray Dog Brewing Company. And we've only been open for five years. And within that five years, we've been named one of Canada's top top five or top 20 best new breweries. Uh, we've won multiple gold gold medals for the Canadian Brewing Awards. So and that's yeah. where you work. That's where awesome. I work. What do you do? Are you brew there? Or I do, do a little do? bit of everything. I work the front yeah, of the house. The house. I work in the back of the house doing brewing packaging. You're the guy. Uh, uh, I do deliveries. A little bit of everything. Okay. And that was the first schmuck they okay. hired. What's ah. your... What's your favorite beer that Stray Dog makes? My favorite? Okay. So I actually have two. We're going to interview you, by the way. Yeah. We're, we're taking this over. Yeah, let's do it. So my <laughs> the one when they first made it, it's, uh, it's called a Jeanne d'Arc, which is translated means Joan of Arc. Uh, or, but we have a road here in, in Ottawa called a Jeanne d'Arc. And it is a oatmeal stout. And oh. I love, I love mm, me a yum. good oatmeal stout. Mm, mm-hmm. The next one that we did, which was just done this year, was an Imperial coffee stout that we okay. recirculated a 15-barrel fermenter over five gallons worth of freshly roasted espresso beans. Wow. Mm. Okay. And good. that was I make like a pretty good coffee beer myself. Sale, but, uh. <laughs> she does an amazing. I, I love a good coffee. Don't get me wrong. A, a good strong coffee americano awesome. goes a long way. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So he's a stout. He's a stouty boy. That's cool. But stouty. wait, you didn't answer the original question. I'm curious to know, like, because every country kind of has their like standard, their, their standard international, their standard right. light lager, lager. macro right. right. produced. Pale right. lager. What so, is it? Say her name. So we Mention have it. two main mainstream breweries or beer producers here in Canada: Molson's and Labatt's. Mm. Okay. If you're gonna it's... if you're gonna buy a Labatt's beer, and I'm pretty sure you have this in the states, it's Labatt Blue. Mm-hmm. I've had Labatt Blue in Idaho. Yeah, times. you must use it as paint stripper. <laughs> Oh, no. Then if you're going to buy it Molson, it's it, it, they have the patriotic beer called Molson Canadian. Both of them are lagers. Both of them fall in within the Pilsner category. Mm. But they're even though they're considered to be technically perfect beers because they're easy to re- reproduce time and time again, if you go out in a bender on any of those, the headache you're going to have the next morning is brutal yeah. because of all the cheap filler they put in it between corn and rice so they can do a fast turnaround because technically they can rip those beers around in four days well yeah i love corn and i love rice and beer so don't get me wrong do it right don't get me wrong i love a good (laughs) cerveza when it's done right like a good cerveza goes a long way and what people do when they oh it's a a craft uh corona i'm like no it's not a corona it's cerveza. And if you put <laughs> lime in it, I'm going to fucking shoot you. Oh, no, no. 
We can put a lime in it. It's okay, guys. <laughs> no! You guys Sacrilege! My secret favorite beer, Bud Light with lime. Oh, Lord. Oh, gosh. Really? God. I gotta try that. Poolside? Ooh, honey. Okay. All right. I'm gonna give you a beer that you might want to try. I'll even, if you want, I'll give you the recipe for it. Sure. It's a tangerine Amarillo hops pale ale. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So I could get into that. There's a company out of the states called Aseptic Puree, and you can buy yes, like four I've pound, like four pound homebrew packs. Yeah. So yes. I bought um, blueberry, raspberry, blackberry, and tangerine. The first three I made into either Berliner Weiss or into cream ale. And then this one I've been waiting to make because I just, because I'm going to do a double batch of it. And I just got my 14 gallon uh, fermenter from Spike Brewing. Oh, Oh, yeah. And I just got, I did, I'm almost got my brand new 20 gallon three vessel all sorted out. Dang. So, I was going to ask, dang. I was like, I was going to ask what you brew on, but yeah, so right okay. now I have right now I'm still using my Bruzilla and it's fantastic. Love Bruzilla. I amazing. still love that name too, by the way. Oh, no, yeah. they're bang for your buck. Bruzilla. Oh yeah. It's so, to be honest, I, for, for the best bang for your buck, you're best off going with a Bruzilla compared to a grandfather. I mean, unless you want all the bells and whistles and all the high tech shit. Yeah, go with grandfather. You can be in your be in your your living room. Oh yeah, okay. it takes away the fun. You want to be there, watching it, maintaining it, and making sure if anything should happen, you're there to make mm-hmm. take care of it. Mm-hmm. I want to go back to that last statement because I assure <laughs> you, if you're watching like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and looking at your beer on your app, that is fun. That is that's fun. Um, all right. Our friend Bruzilla, doesn't Andy use Brazilla? No, yes, yes. Andy does. He has like two of them. He's like two. He's like a Brazilla truther. Love it. And we saw we saw Brazilla at the, the story work at. And we actually got the new Gen 4 ones that are very similar to Grand Yeah, I thought the new Gen 4s are going to like Wi-Fi based and the control, the controllers getting moved up. So you're not like yep. punched over yeah. like Quasimodo and all that. Sure. Yeah, they're pretty rad, but but it sounds like you're putting together like a pilot system for a brewery, basically. Mm. <laughs> I, I yeah, bought it from a, I got it from my friends who are veterans like I am. Uh, they opened a brewery here called Vimy, named after Vimy Ridge, and yeah. they sold me mm-hmm. their old twenty gallon pilot system Who's for five hundred bucks. Like- so I can't complain. I just got to get it. There's only one part. I can't get the HLT to power up. So either there's something wrong with the, the PID or a relay or the elements burnt out. So, oh, it's like electric system? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Full okay. electric. So I have a, a heated two-car garage where I live here in Canada. Because it on a cold day, a really bad cold day, you're looking at what minus 35 degrees celsius i'm like i don't even know what that equivalent uh, is. is that freezing so or is it it's below freezing <laughs> freezing oh my is God. freezing is zero so when you get into the negative numbers uh anything below minus five you best bundle up tyler he's speaking in celsius right now by the way yeah, Lori knows Celsius now because she's all. Oh, so Lori knows what I'm talking about when I say minus thirty. When you say zero, I say thirty-two. Okay. <sighs> wow, I'm impressed. Math. I only know I only know Fahrenheit because I'm I'm that American person. Oh, Dan, I wanted to t- to ask you about your aseptic <laughs> fruit. <clears throat> yeah. Um, because I've noticed with fruit, there's kind of like there's two like type of flavors there's like a fresh Mm -hmm. i'm speaking really with i i I always notice with blueberry there's like a fresh blueberry flavor and there's like a like a cooked jam blueberry flavor do you know what i mean yeah it does those aseptic fruits is it because they're like boiled in the can does it have like a cooked jammy flavor which by the way i love no it's more of a tart 
Interesting. So when the first time I did my blueberry cream meal, I went to Costco and I bought like what, four or five bags of frozen blueberries, thawed them all out, dumped them into a blender, pureed the hell out of it, and then dumped it in. And it worked mm. okay. Mm. Then I went to aseptic and I got it already done, sealed in a hermetically sealed bag where I only had to cut it open and dump it into uh, the fermenter after the first week. And away we go. And it's all gone. Done. You got beautiful color out of it. Everything. Yeah. Purees are, I've done both like fresh fruit, fruit sorry, and puree. It kind of depends on the, kind of depends on the base beer style um but definitely have had great results with with both but i yeah it kind of depends on like what you're going for and the base style so in my it just in my personal experience yeah so what's some of the craziest stuff you've done (laughs) Uh, i like that (laughs) you don't want to (laughs) know i you know I mean, I put cereal in beer, but like that's not even crazy anymore because everyone does that shit. It's like, that's let's great. dump that's, Lucky Charms in the mash and like take a video and put it on YouTube. It's not really crazy anymore. So, I mean, the crazy, ugh, craziest thing I do now is like, um, I guess I have a barrel. So I barrel age stuff, um, a 15 gallon barrel, which is kind of crazy, I suppose right um just throwing it's mostly just in terms of crazy like adjuncts right it's like okay the toasted coconut the plantains which is you know that's kind of crazy but i do the research and kind of hope for the best so i hear plantains and i think tostones huh i hear plantains and i think tostones i don't know what tostones are but it's like you're like from like Southern California. Guys, you don't know what tostones are. I'm a freaking no. Canuck and I know what tostones are. What is t- They're like little t- little fried plantain bites. Kind of like banana chips, but thicker with a plantain. They're deep oh, fried. I mean, they're, they're like the plantains are sort of cooked at the beginning. Then they're flattened. Then they're deep fried. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I honestly oh, I hate plantains. The reason I'm doing it is <laughs> If we're an experiment to like make like kind of a Panamanian influence. Okay. Beer. So my mom used to make me eat plantains when I was a kid and I hated them, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to embrace them again. You okay. know, how about your So starchy though. I'm curious how they work with the yeast. Yeah. It was interesting. It's kind of, tasty. it kind of was giving a little, a little bit more banana yeah. But yeah. Banana. What about you, Lori? Yeah. <laughs> Just change the topic here. Um, crazy guys. I've been brewing for like eight years and I just made my, I made my second hazy, but I it's, it turned out good. Finally. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Hazy IPA, hazy paleo mm-hmm. IPA. A hazy, a hazy IPA. Oh, Ooh, I want to try that. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's okay. Crazy. It's crazy because I don't like hazies and I tried to make another one. It didn't turn out. And then I tried it again. It didn't turn out. Her so, husband I, likes them though. So she's. So what did you yeah. do differently that, that worked this time? I just followed the directions. <laughs> from... <laughs> All right. All I right. didn't overthink it. I was basic as fuck. I was like, you know, a ton of hops here. Do- doesn't fucking matter. Just throw them all in, throw a bunch in. I like read this article. They're like too many different varietals will really muddle up your hazy. I'm like, who gives a shit? Blah, blah, blah. It tastes like to me, it tastes like soap. My husband loves it. So okay, if he I likes it, that's all, try- let him drink hey. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's for him, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think another crazy thing I did as I made a Berliner Weiss, like the real way, like I let it sit for like six months. Mm-hmm. That has really paid off. And I, and I would like to make, I think the craziest thing I want to do now is just make like, I really would love to make like a very straightforward bohemian pilsner. Oh, that's a hard one. Oh my God. 
It will sign. They're, they're fun to they're fun to make, but you've got to fun be to bang. drink. <laughs> they're fun to drink, but you got to like almost be bang on with numbers to make. Lori, yeah. are you gonna do? Are you gonna do decoction mash? No, I. D- <laughs> Like, no. Oh, I see. There's like shade being thrown now. Okay, all right. No, no shade. Well, this is where I have to ask. What does the decoction mean again? No, stop. <laughs> she's, she's playing that game. She's like, oh, I don't know. She freaking knows what a decoction is. I don't know. Is. So yeah, I'm. I have a glycol system, and I like finally made a logger. But for some reason, I I love loggers, obsessed. But for some reason, I decided to make a Roush beer. It turned out great. But We're as so you know, good. it's not like your most chuggable. No. Not everyone is into it. You know, it's sort of just it's more novel. Um, but I would like to 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 use the glycol system for good. It's just been so hot here. I'm just, you know, I'm really trying to not put a strain on the grid right now. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to hold off. use Kvike. <laughs> Also, I know t- if I make a pilsner, I'm gonna have to make it like four or five times before it even is adequate. So I don't know. That's that's the craziest thing I could think of. Okay. Yeah, Dan, you're dealing with like below freezing and we're dealing with above hellish temperatures All right. over here. So Lori will the do world, the the world is ending. So <laughs> hopefully Lori can do the conversion. Uh the hottest day we've had here has been 35 degrees Celsius plus humidity, which put us over 40 degrees Celsius. So over into the hundred degree marker. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you ain't got nothing on Reseda, <laughs> honey. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not you know trying what? to. I'm just saying, I know what you mean by hot. And I also have a glycol system. It, they're fantastic. No, oh, yeah. Um, best way to make a logger and all that, unless you're doing it under pressure. If you, I if haven't you tried that ferment, yet. I it's like the easiest that. way to turn a beer around. I just recently did a pressure ferment and it, the results were great. It wasn't on a lager. It was actually on an ale, yep. with English ale strain, which is like, you, you don't want to put that under pressure, but I had a, I had a plan for it and the final beer still came out as planned, but yeah, it was, it was fermenting at 85 degrees and it came out so clean. I was like, what the hell is weird. That's so a we, cool thing. I'm trying to get Lori into that because I think you would really be about that, Lori. I Pressure fermentation, to. especially in heat, is yeah. a godsend unless you have a glycol system. Because all you got to do is dump everything in, put a spunding valve on, turn your uh, set the valve to a to maximum 15 PSI, and then just let it rip. That's it. Yeah. And it's done within like three, four days. Do you guys want to know a secret? Sure. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, that's, that sounds great, but I just, I love a little downtime between brewing and packaging. In fact, I usually package about 16 days in. So I don't know. That's fair. That's fair. That's that's cool. (laughs) It's my lazy, my lazy uh, rhythm. My lazy rhythm usually goes once it's all done fermenting, it goes to a bright tank, mm. carbs in the bright tank, then to a keg into my kegerator. Screw packaging. You have a you have a bright tank as a home brew. Holy crap. Do you have like a big ass garage? What is up? I have a heated two car <laughs> garage. Oh my gosh. Such so in flat. the bright tank, you have like a massive like carb stone. I've got a car- I have a 10 gallon bro. bright tank from from SS Brew Tech. Okay. Uh, so my the glycol chill I have is the Ice Max 4 from Brewbuilt. So uh, okay, yeah. So, so they're that fantastic. One. All the pumps, and everything are all internalized. So I only had to buy it once. And that's all I had to buy for it. And it's everything's got its own sensors, everything. It's fantastic. Ah. Who's coming through the That's back awesome. door? Who's coming in behind? Who's coming in behind? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no one. So, so no one. back on the crazy stuff. So um, I, I'm going to get your guys' feedback on this because I'm getting ready to do it probably next week. Uh, it's going to sound very cliche Canadian. So no heckling. Don't uh, even know what that means. I'm making a maple, maple. bacon 
donut stout. Do it. Oh. So I'm going to go to our, like, there's a really good donut shop close by here in Oral called Susie Q Donuts, where they do fresh donuts every day. And they're about yay tall. And better. And it's like fresh bacon, <laughs> maple gla- glaze, everything. So I'm going to get these donuts and put them straight into the mash. The mash will act like a, like a filter to catch any grease. And then in, into boil it, a little bit of Fuggles, maybe a little bit of East Kent Golding, and then go from there. This is so cute. So you're going <laughs> to, you're going to, how many dozen of donuts are you going to buy for this? How, how big of a batch? It's, you gonna it's only going to be a small batch to see if it works. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'll probably make a five gallon batch and it'll be about maybe a half a dozen donuts going into the actual mash and then once that's done and fermented out it may wind up in a bourbon barrel oh cool it might wait what's the base again a stout it's a stout an imperial stout a stout is that how you guys say in canada i want to suggest it's it's not a boot it's a bout Uh, (laughs) i I want to suggest the uh, the gastromolecular version Guys, let's 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 brainchild this. All right, let's what do it. does that mean? Okay. molecular. <laughs> I think you should do a stout with uh, smoked grain. Okay. For the bacon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, like the cherry smoke. That should smell yeah. like bacon. It does. Some biscuit malt for your donut. Okay. And a bunch of uh oh oh and um lactose. <laughs> yeah, lactose just for pastry and then just like c- condition it with maple. Okay. That's that's a, that's a long way around to doing it. But yeah, <laughs> why <fair> not? <laughs> so talking about smoke malt and things like that, I I have used smoke malt. Uh, I did a a, a um a honey smoked porter. Ooh. So I got a uh, honey malt, smoke malt, uh, maris solder, a little bit of biscuit malt, uh, some chocolate malt, and some dark uh, double roasted crystal. And it worked out fantastic. I mean, how much, uh, that sounds like an awesome grain will bill, by the way. How much smoke malt do you think you use? Uh, Just a little bit? A hundred grams. That's okay. it. Let me nope. compute that. Um, so ten percent, five percent. It's it's it's. Let's ask Siri. Beep boop yeah. bop boop beep boop bop. You get out the calculator. What is a hundred grams in ounces? <laughs> I have to do this all the time. I really want to learn. So three and, three and a half ounces. Gram. I want to learn oh, leader. Just a touch. Perfect. I love it. Yeah, three and a half ounces. Then I did probably about maybe six ounces of the honey malt. So nice. just basically you're just letting it kiss the beer and that's it. A dash. A dash. That's it. I mean, I have a friend who has a who has bees, and he's always said, if ever you want fresh honey, let me know. I'll bring it over to you by the pound. So, have you t- um, for free? Took him up on the- yeah. What are you going to do with it? I teach him to make beer. So he comes over, we brew double Heck batches. Yeah. He takes half, I take the other half. Are you doing a brag it? What do you have? You used the honey? I've used the honey when I actually made a honey brown. Nice. More so, important question. Did you listen to our honey episode that we just released? <laughs> No, uh, I haven't. I'm going to have to go listen to that one. You have to. Yeah, the guy we talked to is the most passionate person you will ever encounter about honey. Like, he really? fucking knows. And it is so it's much. awesome. He's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So if you want someone who knows what they're talking about on, on either on hops or on German beer, Stan Harominus is a fantastic dude to have him come talk hops and he is the most generous guy i've ever talked to uh the next person if you want to talk german beer i don't know if you've heard of him okay. but he's he uh, it's a uh, horst dornbush 
And he is like the utmost authority on German beer. The most recent, um, um, I guess. Yeah, they talked to him on a Humber Happy Humber. Hour, right? Yeah. yeah. He put out a book with uh, Garrett Oliver. That's and really it's cool. Fantastic. Absolutely. Fa- he is the nicest man in the world. Absolutely. If you ever want to talk German beer, reach out to him and it's awesome. Okay. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. So where do you guys see yourselves going in your, in your beer lives? I mean, I know you have lives outside of beer. You like, no, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. If you had lives outside of beer, (laughs) what do you, where do you see things going? Lori, um, I blah blah blah. Sorry, my brain my brain died. <laughs> um, I'm a K twelve classroom teacher in California, okay. and it is uh, in the U S. It's difficult and stressful. So I see myself because I've already put like twenty plus years into this. I'm gonna see it through to the end. Um, and then after that, I don't know in beer, I, I do have a second job and I work as a field marketing rep for Sierra Nevada. Oh, wow. Um, I, and I like it. I just, I did a lot of fringe benefits and it's one of the best beer companies in the world. And I love being a part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll just probably ride that and keep homebrewing i love being involved in the podcast and the homebrew club i love being a darling of the american homebrews association and that's about it probably nothing um too professional beyond field marking which by the way i think is very very cool and very exciting and very interesting in contrast to my job as a as an educator um so yeah I would love to just retire. Like that's my ultimate goal is just to retire. Retirement's fun. Trust me. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Cause then you get to do <laughs> yeah, it. I want to retire too. I'm 24. Yeah. I want to, I'm ready. <laughs> I think I have like 10 more years at the most. And then I'm done. What? You can't mm-hmm. retire after 20 years. Yeah. What the hell? Well, I'm only in my forties. Yeah. I really feel freaking old now. <clears throat> I really feel old now. It's okay. I don't feel old. Being old is awesome. I'm 50. Yeah. That's cool. You're a veteran in more yeah, ways. And than you're one. retired. There's oh. a lot of fifth people in their 50s working their asses off still. You're I'm sure I'm okay. th- yeah. My kids, my son's 21, my daughter's 18, and I get called old man on a regular basis. Trust yes. me. I mean, that's what I love that. I <laughs> That's yeah. what people that age say they're so mean you know? yeah it's i get like... yelled at by a 14 year old on like a very regular basis it's fun <laughs> i love my kids i have a cat my cat doesn't yell at me but she kind yeah. of does. <laughs> <laughs> it only gets angry at you when it's hungry right no not even honestly she's pretty chill so I okay think i got lucky yeah so you've had some pretty interesting uh guests on your show i mean you've i think you've had sarah flora on or you know oh, sarah yeah. Flora. uh you've uh, had you've you've talked with the boys from the homebrew happy hour uh have you have you guys been on with uh coulter wilson for a home uh from a, a homebrewing diy yeah yeah we did a little bit of, that was made a the rounds. Ago. yeah, yeah. So these are all people I, I've talked with or I, I stay in touch with. Not so much with Sarah because she's so freaking busy. Like she, her channel and everything has taken off like a skyrocket, which is awesome to see because in my opinion, um, women brewers make better beer than men, <laughs> which is very, very true. It's um, in our DNA. <laughs> I'm Listen, not going to yeah. argue with you because... Um, I, uh, I've met some really cool female brewer, pro brewers here in Ottawa and I'm like, I'm floored with their processes and what they can do. Um, we have one of Canada's only kosher breweries here in Ottawa. Oh, right on. Oh, okay. And they're a husband and wife team. The husband does all the marketing and the wife does all the brewing. And she says, I make up all the recipes myself. 
and I do my own research. I do it all. And all their beers are fantastic. So, I mean, of course they are. <laughs> but no, but that's, I, I see where you're getting at. That's really cool. I think that, um, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of do want to travel around a little bit more and go to more breweries that women, you know, are the head brewers at. Yeah. There's definitely a handful down here, but it is cool to, you know, stumble upon, you know, other breweries around the country slash in other countries where, you know, women are the head brewers. They're not necessarily on social media, like, you know, posting a bunch of stuff, which is great, you know, so it's hard, they're a little harder to find, but when you do find them, it's, it's pretty rad. So, mm-hmm. so who are you guys hoping to, to, uh, I shouldn't say hoping, but we'll, I'll come back to this question. <laughs> if, if you're going to go on a beer adventure, where would you want to go anywhere in the world? Where do you want to go? Belgium. Belgium. Hey, what do you say, Laurie? I said we already planned it. We're going to Germany. Germany, sorry, and Belgium. Sorry, and Belgium, were... yeah. yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. I can understand. Uh, like Germany, absolutely. Berliner Weiss, uh, Schwartz beer, German Los Pilsner, Lagers. the best beer yep. in the world. All, those are all great beers. Helles, ah, oh, so good. Mm-hmm. Love a good Helles. All the, all the lagers. Absolutely. Belgium. Uh, <gasps> Oh, I don't know. You're not a Belgian like boy. What you're doing right now. <laughs> I no. think you should circle back. Say so, 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 like I I equate Belgium to saisons, and saisons and I do not get along. <gasps> All right, I'm gonna exit out of here. Um, <laughs> like it's been really great talking to you. Uh, like, sorry, you no, have you ever I'm had a the- Have you ever had a West Malé Dubel? A what? I would like to challenge you to have a West Malé Dubel and then tell me what you think. And I don't even think I can get that here. Well, if I can oh, get it, you can get it. Um, yeah. in- it all yeah. depends on whether or not our liquor commission can get it or not, because we actually have a liquor and control board here in Ontario. Well, I think you should write an angry email to the liquor commission if you can't get it. <laughs> so the, uh, the craziest, not craziest, but my first introduction to a saison or even like a Belgian triple was La Femme de Monde. Oh, where, okay. Which is a, it's brewed in Montreal. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's two versions of this beer. You have one called uh, Le Monde Zit, which is translated into The Damned. And then La Femme de Monde, which is translated into The End of the World. Uh, Monzit is about 9% and it's like heavy duty chewing through bread. Mm, and then you have okay. Fin de Mon where it's got that, it, it's got that, like, like you have with a whole garden, that kind of peppery, whatever flavor to it. Funk, yeah. But it's got that really funky, to me, gross banana flavor that I, I can't get through in a beer. I can't. That's and that, but that's me. I know a lot of people yeah. who, who love them and more power to them. And I can understand. I can understand the fascination with them and the enjoyment with them. I just don't have that because I got. I guess my palate's not that sophisticated. No, we get it. It's like Belgian. That Belgian yeast character ain't for everyone. You know, it's, it's just very not. specific. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So if you're challenging me to find that beer. I'm going to challenge mm-hmm. you to make a cherry lambic. Wow. What? A lambic? Okay. I've I'll made do. a lambic. Does it require additional equipment? Nope. It requires <laughs> like years and years. Nope. Uh, so if you're going to do it, you need, it requires at least four yeast strains. And then about 12 pounds worth of cherry puree. Hmm. And then you gotta I'm let it gallon. Five? Five. Okay, that's not bad. Sorry. And then that's you've got to let it do its thing for almost six months. And then you gotta let it that's sit. Not bad. That sounds light for a lamb, but 
that's fermenting it out. And then you got to let it, when you put like the sour, the final souring in, you got to let it go for another six. So you're looking at roughly a year before it's ready. You know what? I have a, I have a, I have a ye, a mead that I've been too lazy to package for three years. So I, I was going to say, didn't you hear Lori say she likes time in between? I <laughs> like to be lazy. Do I like to procure 12 pounds of cherries and four yeast strains? Probably not, four but we'll see. We'll well. see. Uh, to be honest, it, it, it is actually one of the easier ones to make. It's just putting it off to the side and letting it do its thing and not going constantly going poking at it. Yeah. Uh, anytime I, have... I find someone has like lamb, like, are we drinking lamb? Get... It's always when I'm already like wasted and haven't eaten anything. And it's just <laughs> like this crazy thing in my stomach on top of whatever like murder scene is already in there. And so <laughs> honestly, I haven't really... I love Next. cherries and I love sour. Yeah. They're not. I have not treated me well, lambics. All right. I might have a. I might have a lambic actually tonight. We've been standing on one for a little bit. Oh. I think cherries are more associated with like a creek. A creek, right? Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I feel like those beers are like very special in that and their processes. They're honestly, know. they're great, especially when they're done right. They're really, really good. They're, yeah. light, they're refreshing not like blow your mind sour they're just nice and tart they're really really good yeah. well we're gonna go to belgium and germany mm-hmm. and have some really good beer <laughs> <laughs> all right and then you gotta come to america and have a chorus i can get that or here a, or a pap brew or a bud brew, light with lime It'll i can get that here bud too i can get like pbr here or four loco. Do you have four locos in Canada? Yes. Do you have, have Tecate <laughs> Titanium? Have what? Do you Tecate. have White Claw? Truly? Uh, Do you know I'm Drake? Punked. You know Justin Bieber? <laughs> just kidding. Now I'm just being stupid. Wait. You guys have Bud Light. The commission is allowed for the Bud Light, but they haven't allowed for the West Male. Seriously. You really Bud, need to Bud Light. Here's, here's the thing: permission. Budweiser and also uh, a beautiful Bud bat are owned by Enbev. I was gonna say Anheuser Busch, AB and mm-hmm. Bev, Enbev. So Bev. you can bring that across the border because it's brewing in do whatever they want. They do what they want. Pretty much. Have you ever they tried would... any making any historical beers? Yes. You sound Kentucky thrilled about common. it. I made a Kentucky Common. It was okay. great. We both made a Kentucky Common, actually. Yeah. I made one a while ago. I've yeah. never had a, or heard of a Kentucky Common. It's good. It's like, what is it? It's like, is it like a lager like a dark corn cream. Amber. Yeah. It's okay. like corn six row and like two row and like, like cold for a minute. I don't know. Yeah. Good. Cool. Is that just like a straight up ale, ale yeast, not lager yeast? Mm, no, I use like an, a British straight. I think I, think, I use no, like you 04. Used a cream ale. Oh, I used a cream ale. You're right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think I just cold for men. She like knows that. all my stuff. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't even know my own Perfect. stuff. But... So, what do you guys like to use for equipment? What's your favorite go to equipment to use when you're making your beer? Well, I brew on a G40, a Grandfather 40. Nice. And I have a glycol chiller system and it's it's great. I love it. But I also love to make cider and I just like to do it old school, which is juice and a glass carboy and a little bit of yeast. And I like to package with honey. And so usually whatever beer I'm making, I always have cider. Very simple, honey conditioned cider to drink i love it how, how much honey are you putting in the bottles uh when i bottle condition yeah. uh, about i just do 15 tablespoons for a five gallon batch all right okay so you're putting it into the actual beer before you package it correct kind of like kind of like a uh, simple syrup it, it's cider but yes okay <clears throat> okay how about you tyler 
Um, so typically I kind of switched to like a Brona bag situation, um, 15 gallon like pot, but I have to like, it's almost like the, if a Brusilla grandfather had like a propane system, because I have like a rimmed tube uh, with a PID controller so that keeps the mash temperature throughout and uh, you know I mean it keeps it really clear not that it matters after you like take the bag out but it was basically like a 15 gallon kettle brew bag a PID controller and like just like a recirculating right uh, kind of system and that's been working for me really well if I do bigger batches I kind of go back to the traditional like Mash sun cooler, hot liquor tank, boil kettle with like a pump and stuff. Um, but yeah, all propane just because it would be so nice to go all electric, but I live in an apartment complex where like the electricity is a little sketchy. So I'm not about to be in the middle of a brew day and like electricity goes out in the middle of a boil. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Even though I use the, you know, I use the recirculating, you know, the PID, that's electric, but like I couldn't do without, you know what I mean? It's, um, it's funny you said that you don't want to be in the middle of a brew day and the power go out. That's happened to me with my electric system where I had to bust I'm out sure. the old camp stove, mm-hmm. transfer everything into you know, those are black enameled canning pots. Yeah. Dumped everything into that and put that over top the camp stove to bring it to a boil. I let it boil the hell out of it and it was changed the cylinders on it because how long oh had. god that sounds like a i would give up <laughs> i wasn't yeah, gonna no, waste power, it the power's gone out when i've been like i got just got back home from like buying jugs of water for the brew day i'm like oh i should be fine and then i was like shit i need electricity to like run the pump <laughs> <laughs> So without a pump, it was, you know, you could still do it manually. It was just a little bit more of an effort for me, but yeah, it, it's not fun. No, it's not fun. So <laughs> no. So we talked about some historical beers and I, I, I like me, like a, a squirrel going down our rabbit hole or whatever, <laughs> Johnny object syndrome and like, you know, Doug from the movie up. Hello, I ball. That's me. I get distracted <laughs> easily. Um, have you ever tried making a Scottish historic beer with no hops, just heather tips? No, no. But you I think try. you have. I have. Me? No. Oh, no. oh, yeah. I have. You have. It's it's a it's it's spelled F R O A C H. I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I have friends who live in Scotland and I, every time I try to say it, I get my ass kicked when I see them. Um, it, they don't, before they found hops for this one beer, they used natural plants and Heather tips uh, did the same thing as hops and with, for the bittering agent and everything else. And I submitted that beer to the 2021 uh, national home brewers competition. And I placed in the top 20. Mm. Oh, no way. Congratulations. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Even though they're saying this is not a historical beer. I'm like, uh, it dates back to 1200 BC. <laughs> Wait, I thought Groots were in the historical category. It's not a Groot. It's a straight up ale. Mm. <laughs> oh, I, I, maybe debatable. Mm. Oh. All right. Let's do this. Come on. <laughs> No, so, Scott, I can't. Scottish. I can't do all the convers- all the Canadian conversions in my head. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> that sounds good. Do you still have some of that laughed or no? Uh, I'm so getting ready gone. to make it again. I'm Heck make yeah, it again. send us a and... bottle. Wait, I don't know. Like when I think of Heather, like I first pictured lavender, and lavender does it does kind of feel hoppy to me sometimes. Yep. But I have. I'm trying to think of Heather. Although I know a million heathers, I I don't know what it smells like. Uh, Is it's, that like a common thing in Ottawa? It's, like, like no, a it's, a, scent? it's an indigenous plant from Scotland. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're in Scotland, it's like it's kind of like a like a a weed. It's purple flowers, really 
prickly thorns on it. You got to be careful when if you go into it because it'll it'll cut you up pretty bad. Hmm. Uh, but uh, here, if you want to brew with it, you can buy just the the tips from the flowers. Just the uh, or, tips. Just the tips that are already dried out for you. And it, depending on the size of the batch, you're going to just the tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, took you a minute, but... I was trying not to go there. Uh, you can buy them uh, in 200 uh, gram bags. So 200 grams, maybe that's maybe two ounces. Six ounces. Six ounces. Okay. Conversions is not army guy i make i destroy things i don't put things together no no, no. we i have the wrong measurements what is a pound what is an ounce what Stupid. what's a gallon a you know yeah it's like no saying, no it's grams 3.5 grams i know that i know what's like three miles is that's five a, kilometers that's an eighth of an ounce oh my god what is a kilometer i don't even know mm. kilometer and a half is what no what two and a half kilometers is a mile and a half Sure. I'm no left for running marathons, so I'll take your word for it. Okay. So <laughs> what are some of the things that you see yourselves doing down the road with the podcast and with your own brewing? Like uh, aside from uh some crazy traveling to Germany, Belgium, or even maybe into Poland, Czechoslovakia. Ooh, going over yeah. to England, France, maybe. He planned, he's planning our, our dream trip. So what do you see yourselves doing? Uh, I think, I mean, and Lori could obviously um, speak for herself too, but like pod-wise, um, I like what we're doing. Like it's casual. We work hard, but it's, you know, it's to our speed. It's to our kind of schedule constraints. Um, and we talk to a lot of awesome people, get a lot of cool information. We have fun. Um, so to be honest, the way it is now is, is cool for me. Um, I don't have dreams of like being on like iHeartRadio one day. That'd be maybe cool. I don't know. Or being like some award-winning podcaster. But I think uh, I appreciate the amount of people that appreciate our podcast the tone of it the information they get etc so that for me is enough uh i mean brewing wise that's what i'm super passionate about so i have many endeavors in brewing you could follow me on instagram at tyler's brew and check that out but like ultimately you know in a few years it'd be cool to have like a small scale kind of thing and uh you know just make like batches of beer the styles that I'm super passionate about that are really you know dialed in and really good and that's pretty much it I, I only want the simple things in life so <laughs> that's me <laughs> awesome how about you Lori uh I think for me uh like just like Tyler said we like to keep our podcasts very very casual we only release like every other week and um we're able to make it work with our we both have super busy um schedules but also to me it serves a purpose of like i like to document our conversations and i like to record it and i also feel like when we started the podcast in 2020 um at that time, there were not other women homebrewer or women brewers on podcasts. And it wasn't something that I could <clears throat> find or, you know, there were lots of male voices and like a very specific viewpoint. Um, and I think Tyler and I kind of have our own niche. We're very chatty and casual and um, candid and um we're we try not to be pretentious we do not know everything we we sometimes try to explain things don't for viewers. Know everything no and we don't like to explain like we do we don't like to act like we do and um i mean honestly like for me 
I like to be almost evangelical about brewing. So I love a beginner brewer. I love like a new fresh face. Like, where do I get started here? Jump in. So I feel like when we're designing our podcasts or we're talking about our episodes or even naming them and people are trying to search for them, we're trying to like put out mm-hmm. subjects that I think would interest um, newer brewers, you know, or, you know, and usually when we put out a a podcast, we really get engaged in these great conversations. And there's a lot of like, um, like investigation that goes on a lot of inquiry and it's, to me, it's super fun. I love it. That's cool. I find at least in the, in the, in the vast homebrew community, that's between borders and whatnot, you can reach out to anybody as a home brewer that, you know, or within a club, ask them a question. And I find there's two takes in in asking those questions. You're going to have those people who are hoity-toity, snobby, and figure and ask, come back and say, "Why don't you know this?" But then there's the people actually out there who care and want to help you out and say, "Well, this is what I do. It doesn't mean you have to try it, but this is what I do. I you might want to try this, or you could try this." Mm-hmm. And those are the people I tend to gravitate towards. All these other people can go pound freaking salt for all I care <laughs> but yeah I, I think spe- speaking anecdotally is really important especially when you're talking about something like home brewing um, because everyone's water is different everyone's yep. ingredients are different everyone's setup is different everyone's you know we're, we're dealing with like uh you know live a live species yeast and so I think it's important to keep that in mind um You know, and I also think it might be generational. I work with a lot of people, like I'm a ceramicist and I, uh, there's a lot of older people that I, that I work with or that I glean information from. And sometimes it's just like, you know, education in, in that area used to be extremely, extremely formal. And now it's hard to find that. So like now education, I think is more anecdotal. And so you have to kind of take whatever you can experience yourself and try to flush it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We're going to wrap this up because I don't know it's getting, but it's almost 1130 here in Canada. So Uh-oh. my old body is going, you've been up since tomorrow. Five, my body's saying you've been up since five o'clock this morning. So, <laughs> so anything you want to pass on to anybody, any words of wisdom? Um, yeah, uh, if you want it, go for it. If you want to do it, go for it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> yep. Because it's really easy to get caught up in, you know, that whole thing, what not to do, what you should do. You know, it's good to try different things and learn for yourself for sure make your own processes and you know just find your own way in this in this thing that's the cool thing about homebrewing is like absolutely there's a way to do it but within that line you know of steps there's you know hundreds of other ways to like do each step so do what you want to do the beer tastes good great if it's fun great if it's not fun figure out how to make it fun and then go from there there you go Lori. i would say the same thing i would say brew for yourself you know when you sit down to make a cake you're not trying to open up a bakery and the be the best (laughs) but you know what that cake you make is going to be so delicious yeah yeah, so brew for yourself i feel like biab is the way the truth and the life i feel like um, natural conditioning and packaging with honey or sugar is like the way to go. Yep. Brew what you want. Keep it simple and don't get caught up in, in any of these like mansplainers or these people with these big systems, yep. just enjoy it and drink it. Yep. Making beer is only as hard as you want to make it. The mm. simpler. And yeah. as long as you can follow a recipe, anybody can do it. Yeah. That's absolutely. the, that's my philosophy. And my last one. Our- yeah, I was going to say, somebody came in and was like, I've been looking into the Brazilla, but like, I heard that if you do it on the Brazilla, you're not really brewing. And like, I can't stand when like, 
that is someone's mentality especially someone who hasn't done it before I'm like yeah. so you like you're against making this like easy for you or you know obviously you're you're of course still brewing but like yeah. here's this awesome system that's well priced and it's making the process extremely like streamlined, streamlined easy. like why wouldn't that attract a new brewer absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. People just want to do things the hard way. It's strange. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you very much for being on the show, ladies. Greatly appreciate it. Um, oh, hopefully down the road, we can maybe team up, do like a, a live brew day or something somewhere along the line or figure yeah. something out and do a little challenge and see who can do the better beer and ship it across the country sure. and see what happens. Or maybe our second dream beer vacation will be Ottawa. You've got 50 breweries. That sounds do amazing. It. If you do it, I can get you, because I work for also for a beer tour company. I can get you on our oh. tour bus for free and take you around and show you all the good spots. I've always wanted to go to Canada. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Don't go to Toronto. Totally overpriced. Toronto. Totally overhyped. Come to Ottawa, a lot smaller. We're, okay. we're a lot more fun. I'm down. Let's do it. Right. So guys, we've we've had Tyler and Lori from Brewed Up Podcast on the show today. Ladies, thank you so much. And guys, thanks a lot for coming along the along for the ride and a beer or two along the way. She's Tyler. That's Lori Dunlow. I'm Dan. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the other side.